Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Toledo, your host on Dent Time PDR, a podcast about PDR training, tutorials, interviews, and much more. So get something to eat, drink, and start pushing. It's time to listen. What's going on, everybody? My name is Mike Toledo. Thank you for joining me on podcast. What podcast are we on again? Here we go again, Don. I think it's 15. I think it's 15 right now. I think it's 14 or 15. Yeah, 15. Okay. <laughs> You're like, okay, let's off. go. Yeah. <laughs> but we'll roll with it, right? <clears throat> we'll roll with 15. If it is wrong, then you'll see it. So you you guys can see how much, how prepared I was to tell you what episode it was. So uh, generally I'm pretty prepared, but you hear the other guy on the, on the other end, that's Don Cavanaugh. So thanks again, Don, for coming on, man. No, oh, thanks for having me again, Mike. It's just great. So Don, uh, you ordered this gigantic handle from Ultra Dentals. Uh, <laughs> the thing's ridiculous, man. I have one. Uh, Daniel Grom's the one that started. I thought it was a joke when he first first saw it and showed it to me, and I was like laughing my butt off. But he really meant to get that on. I mean, he really did de- design that on purpose for real jobs. Tell me, I know you. Did you just get it, or you haven't gotten it yet? I haven't. No, no. You know, you, it, it actually, you, you had kind of helped me through that and I'm glad I got it uh, ordered, but I'm going to get it next week. And I'm so excited to see it because Daniel actually was telling me about that thing at PDR college. We were sitting together for a while on that last day and he was telling me a little bit about it. And I was like, what? The thing sounds huge. And then I saw you and him use it and you can put it like underneath your L, you know, behind your shoulder blade and behind your arm and kind of use your whole body to, to move, you know, especially gas tanks, man, it just moves them up so fast that it, it, it was a must have. So I'm excited it's on the way. Well, explain how big this thing is, dude. Well, that's what I was just going to ask you. Is that thing because on, on video, is it 12? Is it 14? How, how, how wide is that thing? Oh man, I think that's, gosh, it's more than 12 inches long. I, I, I know that it's huge. Uh, maybe it it, looks it, huge. It's, it's 13 or 14 inches. I think that's exact. It's about that. So uh, it's, it's ridiculous. It's, I'm excited to get it. But, it looks huge on, on, on the video. So, but the good thing about this handle is that you can actually lean on one part of the handle and just get the freaking torque and leverage all you want, especially on a nasty big dent that you just need a lot of, you know, drive. And this definitely helps it. it you look funny with it holding you. Look, it looks just so and awkward but it's it's awesome it works great so what i ended up getting uh, in the mail anson sent me their uh, extra large door jammer I, I showed it to you earlier and i'm sure you've already seen it online what do you think of it don that damn jammer is going to hold the door open a little bit wider for us yeah. and i've always liked having the door jammer and taking your light uh, especially towards the end of the finishing of the dent around the corner of the front headlight. So, you know, you're, you're almost like you wouldn't even think it would work because it's like halfway around the front edge of the, you know, the car, but you can get such a nice angle on that and really get that finishing last few pokes in there to really, really clean something up nice for yourself. But what's great about this wider door, we're going to be able to do that to more of a, a, of a degree. I think I can get more of my body hidden behind the door as I'm, as I'm really wrenching on those, on those pokes, you know what I'm saying? Instead of getting so down, I think it's just going to be more comfortable as well as just give us more room to work. Yeah, absolutely. Especially if uh, you, you want to pull, maybe you got the door panel off, right? And, and uh, when the doors too are closed, too, too close to the jam, you don't have nowhere to push, push from no, nothing. You, you, it stops you from giving that leverage to, to really, push so with, with the door open more giving you more space it allows you to uh, freely push that tool without uh being obstructed with uh between the jam and the door wouldn't you agree absolutely 100 percent. so i'm excited i gotta get that thing now too so i know it's never i turn around i gotta buy a new tool it's never ending if you guys want to check it out it's ansonpdr.com it's called the extra large door jammer i believe that's that that's what it's called um yeah uh, would you say for the guys that haven't seen it and the guys that haven't seen it mike are, would you say that's about 10 inches compared to the six or so that was on the other six seven 
this looks i would say close to 10 to 12 inches yes uh just by just by in, 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 in the uh just looking at it so I don't want this to be a PDR tool time. I don't want this to be a PDR tool time thing where I get it get because I know people have got some bad minds are already thinking about what you said. Well, once you say that's ten or ten inches, Mike, you know, and I'm trying not to laugh. Dude. <laughs> you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna take it out of it like a radio commercial and yeah. just cut that part out and then use yeah. it against you forever. So I'm sorry I set you up for that. Oh shoot! We're trying to keep it family, man. You know me, man. So yeah, we um, it is. It's PG all the way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you went there. You went there. <laughs> all right, Don. So our subject is, and here we had another guest that was going to be on with you, and I I really would love to see both of you guys here at the same time. Was Bryce Kelly, um, but he couldn't make it. He's he was running an hour behind on his repair, and then he had another hour and a half before he would get home. So he obviously wasn't going to make it. So I told him I was going to change the subject, but honestly, um, Don, we're just going to, we'll do a part two with Bryce because it's, you know, it's always great to pick Bryce's brain on, on the type of dents and we'll, we'll make it another subject into the dent repair. But this topic is, uh, is a big dense breakdown. So Don, I, I saw you doing a, a dent this morning actually because you you asked me hey mike did you see that video and I, I i like i like i tell a lot of people it's nothing to do with you personally don or anybody else i just i i don't i'm not on facebook deliberately looking for stories to read so i'm not trying to be rude if it's in my right there in the timeline where i'm at where i'm posting something on my own you know my family facebook let's call it i call it family facebook and i happened to see your post and i looked at it, i was like Man, Don, that was a nasty, nasty dent, dude. So let's let's talk about like, and I know every lot of dents are different, but let's talk to the people out there who look at big dents and like, oh man, that's just no, nah, I would, I don't want nothing to do with it. And I, I think they're looking at it too much as a whole. Wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, you got to divide that up, kind of just in your mind, right? Compartmentalize, you know take the shot, like you're going to say, right. And work on that and cover a hand. I, I heard, I heard Sal, or maybe it was you saying something about when you look at a dent, you put your palm over like two of them, put two palms of yeah. the big dent. Yeah. Then you're only looking at a third of it and you bid that spot. Then you lift your other hand and go, Oh, I'll bid those, that spot alone. And then that spot. And if it's $400 each dent, it's a $1,200 dent, right. And you're moving on. Yeah, you mean, yeah, I think Sal did mention something like that, and I do that too as well. I, um, far as bidding the dent, you could do that, but far as looking at the dent, uh, which we are going to get into, Don, is is when you is it do you like here? Let me start from the beginning because when someone sends me a photo or you know, or my technician's got to do a dent, something like nasty, I always want to make sure they see it, and I like to see it. and even though I'm not going to be fixing it right then and there, it's a really good thing to actually study the dent and look at and then kind of visualize how you're going to fix it. Um, tell me your thoughts on, on that. Do you think the same thing or you, what, what do you, what do you look do. forward to? When I do look, what I was saying earlier, I take my hands and maybe it's three hands or four hands, but the hand that's, that's covering the biggest impact. So, so basically I look at that, that center spot where maybe I was covering with a hand and I look at it and I think, well, first of all, can we move that metal? Can we get that up? Can we actually save that part of the dent? Because the rest doesn't really matter, of course. So, and I always look at it that way. And it's always about really getting analytical with it and getting, can I get a soft tip on underneath that to bring that up? Can, can we do that? And so that's in my bidding war, but by looking at how much money I can charge for it, it really gives me incentive to go after bigger and bigger dents, you know? I think that you, you you just said something that's pretty important right there is how much money are you going to price it? So because my philosophy and you, you might agree with me, or you may not. I mean, that's where I brought you on here. I want you to you don't have to agree with me, Don. If you got a different take on it, I'm no, I, right. I invite you to, no, to please give me a different take on it or everyone else. But um, I think when you price it well enough. You've got to price it well enough to where you think or assume that it's going to give you a hard time. And if you don't price it well enough, it makes it more easier for you to give up. Um, that's just 
the way I've been uh, been been thinking. No, no, you're you're absolutely right. If you were working on something for three hours and you knew it paid five hundred dollars, you you'd just bail, you know. But if it's going to pay fifteen hundred dollars, you're going to stay in it, you know, or twelve hundred dollars or something. Yes. So you're right. I agree with that. Yeah. You're not going to quit. You got that kind of time into it. You're like, okay, well, I'm I'm halfway through here. I'm going to continue to go, you know. And do you win them all? You really don't. But the the great thing about big dents and how you get better at them is just to do them time and time again. And I like to tell customers this all the time. You got nothing to lose and everything to gain by using us. It's kind of a no brainer for you. If you get your body shop estimate, it's always two pages. You got body shop time on the front page and you got the paint time on the back page towards the end there. So you'll be able to see exactly if they're charging you $500 for that. And I'm going to charge you $500 for that dent. Then you're break even and you can still go paint the damn thing if you really need to, but you've got nothing to lose and everything to gain. So therefore I've gotten a lot of dents that way from people even if it is an eight hundred dollar dent, when I started, I would say five hundred or four hundred or whatever, whatever that ticket said from the body shop, I would do it because I would get better and better, you know. And a lot of times they were a bit too low, but that's how I got better with the bigger dents. Okay, and that's a good point. And we're we're gonna get back to. I'm gonna go off just a little beaten path. We're gonna talk about the prices of these big dents here. What about if you've got a customer, Don, and they say, "Look, I, I don't, I know, I don't need it perfect." Yeah, I just need you to do the best you can. Now, I heard Paul really like explain it really well. And I think uh, we're going to take a page out of his playbook. Uh, one thing, I'm not sure if you heard that podcast, but I'm not sure I if didn't. I was... I'd love to hear that. Well, uh, what he said is that, uh, and I'm, I'm going to repeat it and I'm going to give all the credit to Paul Corden. So I think it's a great sure. thing. Remember when I heard him say one time, uh, customers like, well, I just want it to be, you know, just better. And Paul's reaction was, well, just better is still the same effort as getting it pretty much to that 10% left. You know what I mean? So, uh, and then he would say, he would, he would tell the customer, Hey, listen, if you want me to get it better, that's 80%. So I'm going to charge you 80% of what my price guide is. So, you know, whatever he thought he could get it, if he can get at 50% or 60%, that's what he would charge. He would look at the dent. And if it's a $725 dent, then you charge him 50 or 60% of that to get it better. So absolutely. I love that. And when I tell customers too, if I know it's not going to come out good and I really don't, I don't think it's going to be a, a candidate for it. Customers will have an answer. They have a, they like, Hey, can you just make it better? And if you professionally, you really want to just tell them, no, go kick sand, but you can tell them it won't look better. It will only look different. So, and that's something that they can, they generally like to understand. I mean, they, they can understand that better instead of going, well, it's not going to come out right. It's not going to come out this. They still want you to try. All you have to say is it's going to look different and you're going to pay for a difference. It's not going to look better. It'll look different. So. Right. Right. No, it's a good point. Do, Do you, do you look at a dent, Don? Here, can I give you my take? My take, when I look at a dent, Don, I like to sit on the dent. I generally... Here, here's my thing. When customers come to me with a big giant dent, I personally don't like to just jump on it. I, I just, I just don't. Yeah. It, it, it right. I, I like to relax on it, look at the dent, take a picture of it, yeah. reschedule the customer. Yeah. I'm more prepared. I know mentally what tools I want to get, what, how I want to do it. And then we'll talk oh, about yeah. the next step. I mean, what's your, what's your process on it? Do you, do you do the dent right then and there when a customer comes in, if you have the time or you just reschedule it? What do you do? I tip, oh, oh, I would, if I just saw that day, I'd definitely be rescheduling even if I had time. Cause I'd be like, holy shit, I'm, I'm with you, man, on that. Sorry about the S, but it, uh, that, that's so well put how you just said it. I really do. Even when I take in a dent, I'll take, even if it takes me a day, I might tell them I need it two days because yeah. I don't like staying on a big dent for a long time. I like giving it a half hour and going and doing a couple of easier dents, uh, do whatever I need to do. And I like to come back to it. So I, I, I don't want the pressure of getting that done at five o'clock. If it's, if it's I, my, my, my thought process is six, $700. Um, so if it's a $1,400 dent, I want it for two days. If it truly is a $600 dent, I'll do it in a day. No problem. But if it's a big smash and I know it's going to take me a while, I'd rather have 
no pressure. And like you being analytical at night, you know what I'm going to do tomorrow with that thing? I'm going to, I'm going to go at it with a whole different light, you know, type of thing. Yeah. I think, and I think it's smart for you guys who are in the new newbies as trying to take on dents like this. It will give you an opportunity to check with other dot guys, uh, give yourself a time to do research, maybe go on that groups like, uh, it was called secret access or secret holes or whatever. What's that? What's the secret yeah. factory holes? Yeah. Is that what yeah. It is secret, on? secret. Yeah. Secret factory holes. Yeah. yeah. Secret factory holes. I think it is. You know? And if you guys are listening to this podcast and you never heard of that group and you're on Facebook and you are, you are a PDR tech, you should consider getting on that. It's a private group, I think, but you can, you can ask request to get on it and then you can actually see yeah. what the access is going to be like. It is a very, very, very good um, forum to be on or group to be on. And plus, if you have Mobile Tech RX, you should consider getting that too as well. That will tell you right away if the panel is aluminum, all that other stuff. It'll tell you a lot of information about the vehicle before you get started. And I think that's very important. And not to plug this because we didn't talk about it, but I really am a firm believer in that Mobile Tech RX too. It's the best thing I ever added to my business in the last year. Um, I was hesitant to get in and it done nothing but um, proven to me that I was pricing things wrong and uh, for many, many years. And it'll it'll make you more money. It's a, it's a great program. So yeah. we'll talk about that some other time because Paul will be the one to talk about that. Yeah, I need to get him on there and uh, John Renstorm. Well, if you guys want to hear a lot of uh, John too, he's on the he's on the PDR Tool Time podcast now too. So uh, John Renstorm, so uh, great John app, Renstrom. great app, and and all the other fellas that are behind the scenes on there too. So um, Every, they're all top shelf guys, friends. Yeah, they are. Yep. I I'd like to um, get into the, into this big dent process though so now that we've kind of covered like kind of like the money thing um all right let's you know let's i think we didn't talk all the way about money don you've got like a let's say a kick in dent on a mercedes benz left rear door you got a nice crown right up right below the window sill like a point you know, like an arrow you know what i mean right mm -hmm. sharp mm -hmm. yeah sure sure okay sharp right there soft below it uh and uh you know, to the typical guy, he probably thinks this isn't too bad, but we know that that crown up there is going to be, that's where the last 10% is going to end up at. So you bet. how are you, you bet. how are you, how are you, uh, how are you attacking that dent? So what I am doing, you know, pretty much different than a lot of people are doing out there, I think, and I'm not sure. And I love to see all these new techniques. I, I learned from you guys and I'm inspired. I'm inspired by, Shoot, by a two year tech that does something. Yeah. I'm just like, what? You know, but for me, I would attack that differently than probably a lot of you. So I hope no one kicks back. But that crown up there above that line for me, Mike, would be what you just mentioned almost exactly. But looking at it a little bit differently, I, I would blend that whole thing out with my hammer before I even got started on that dent. And I would have that, I would be pushing that metal back down into that dent and bringing up some of that that way, because that's kind of how I was taught, the German way. And and I know a few people know, but a few people don't. I never even saw a knockdown for 10 years. I didn't even know there was such a thing. Um, so I was so proficient with my hammer, you know, and I do love knockdowns and I still use them around like door handles and, you know, where you need to, where you can't get a swing in there. And I think they're awesome. I'm not knocking anything here. But for me, I would blend that whole top, and I've seen guys do that with knockdowns. I'm not taking away from knockdown guys here, so no one, no one read into this. Um, but I would take care of that and bring up that center a little bit, and then I would go after that line and work on the bottom. And therefore, I would feel like there's not as much left at the top of the end of the dance, if this makes sense. So I'd be more working well that body line and make that my last 10%. So are you, so what you, let's, let's, let's recap this real quick. So you are, you're tapping down the crowns, uh, and, yep. but Taking down the crown. what if they're too tight and they're not tapping down? Are you releasing pressure underneath the crown and then going back to tapping if, down? If, what, what's your philosophy if, if, there? Yeah. So if it, if, if I'm making a mark with my hammer on the backside of that buckle and moving it down, and when I pound on a buckle, I always pound behind the buckle. Uh, like you were riding a wave. I don't pound on top of the buckle when I'm working on something like that. So I would start from the top and start trying to push it. And as soon as I actually made a hammer mark, then I would know that's tight. That's too tight. And then I would kind of back off it from what you're talking about. I think Mike, 
And then I would go after the middle a little bit and then come back to it till it, you know, would move on its own before I'm, you know, you know how you make that hammer mark. You're like, yeah. Yep. That ain't, that ain't going to wet sand out too well, you know. I think you made a really interesting point in what I like about what you just said, because this is why I brought you on. You came, you came with a different take on how you're removing that crown. You said you're getting behind it a little bit, just behind the, the, the tip of the crown. Am I, am I, yeah. is, am I visioning that right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I'm driving it. I'm, I'm driving it down. So I'm following that line uh-huh. and I'm going up and I'm just following it, you know, going back and forth and, and really just trying to, almost like you would take your hand on like a sheet that was on a, a, a on your, you know, bed, bedspread or yeah, whatever it was. Yeah, yeah. And you're trying to, you're trying to just drag your arm across that to get that freaking, you know, so it's the same way with the hammer, right? I get behind, this is what I teach my students. You get behind it and you just really push that buckle that direction, you know, and it, it's going to go. It really is. It wants to, you know, it's kind of like going or going to each corner of the wrinkled bed and you're pulling on the corners, right? You're just pulling on all four corners and you're trying to figure out where that's going to go. It's the same with metal. So I always look at it that way. Like it's an ebb and flow. It's like throwing a rock into a pond. You get the ripples that go up and around. So what you're doing is you're pushing those crowns back down to the middle of where the ripple was and it's coming up for you, you know, if that makes sense. I, it's hard to say without no, showing no, you on black where I'm talking about. But no. No, We're trying to make this yeah. as visual for the, uh, for the guys out there. You know, I of learned course, something right now. I've been doing it 27 years. I never heard anybody explain it that way. So I think, I think that's something I would be willing to try, try. you know, look at me, Don. I mean, that sounds awesome. I, I really like that. I like that. Cool, man. I like the the way you explained it and it makes sense. Here's the thing too, Don, if if you can explain things, and I think this is the difference between trainers and guys who do dents and who are who are masterminds at doing dents. I'm not saying everybody's the same, but not everybody can explain that they are a genius at PDR. You know what I mean? Like they can't explain <laughs> that they can they can push a dent a certain way they can't explain their 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 because their details are so automatic that they don't think about it so right, right. you know the reason why for this podcast just, is so we yeah. can back ourselves up and then we can we can explain this to people and what you just mentioned was i think is a, is a great tip on what you just said on how to release a, a crown so it's good awesome awesome i had no idea that's great that's just how i've always done it you know well, I, I did, I was, I'm the dummy. I did it on top and when, and, but I mean, I'm, but I, here's the deal the, you and I are pretty much on the same wavelength. I had very, I have very good success for tapping directly on the crown. And if I did was getting tap down marks, I did exactly what you said. Okay. It's time to yeah, push, yeah. you know, or vice versa. Yeah, right. So, yes. 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 I had to find interesting. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, Don. Go ahead. Oh, no, I, I was just going to, I was just going to say with the pushing, um, now the pushing you do you just have to as soon as that feel locked you just have to have to go after that in a you know in a different way so i just i'm just agreeing with you no 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 um what kind of what you said you're you're um you're tapping down you're not using a tap or using a hammer what kind of hammer are you using so i've had this hammer um for 20 plus years and i use it about uh probably 60 percent of the time it's only a 12 inch hammer with a wooden you know wooden handle on it it's just the one i started with it's it's cool it's what i give my students everybody seems to like them but then i'm also using a couple newer hammers that you guys can purchase which is cool i like that boss hammer um i think uh, uh, pr outlet sells it and uh, it's just a great hammer and uh, it's got a chrome ball at the end it is carbon fiber it's a smooth carbon fiber instead um, the knuckle at the end of the of the deal, I think it's probably 13 or 14 inches long. I don't think it's 12. I think it's quite a bit longer. But anyway, it's it's pretty great. I'll 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 throw a, a picture up to you if you can put it somewhere for somebody. But it's just a great all on blending. You can get a little bit further away with it, you know, and it's kind of a, a nicer deal. But if I want pinpoint accuracy, I'm going to my old wooden handle, you know. Um, I go to hammers. It's funny how we, we still go back to our original. We get all these new tools, but it seems like we're just still drawn to what worked for us for years. You know what I mean? Uh, not saying that these tools aren't, yeah. they're not, they're, I mean, I get tools every week and it's just, 
honestly, I feel like my tools get jealous if I don't use them again. You know what I mean? Like, they're like, <laughs> Mike, please, no, I agree, pick man. me, pick me. I have at, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I have added so many tools this year. It's hilarious. I thought I had every tool I needed, you know, five years ago. And uh, I have bought so many stand liner tools and, and just for the bigger smashes and different things. And, but the old, to get back to the pounding down or tapping or whatever, what's funny with whatever we use, whether it's if you're a tap down guy out there or you are a hammer guy, that's the common denominator with every freaking dent you do. You might use your tools, like you say, Mike, once in a blue moon, but every damn dent you do, you're using your same hammer, or your tap down. So it's so important. You just get so used to it because you use it on every dent. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and can I, let me, can I explain to the, to, and if I'm wrong, let me explain this. Let me, let me break it down to the, to the text out there. Let's continue this, this vision of this dent. So uh, if you're just joining me or hopefully you're not, hopefully you're listening to the whole thing, but if someone kicked this Mercedes, uh, let's say E class, uh, this door is kind of got the round one, maybe a 2013 through 2015, something like that. And we're talking about a buckle, I mean, a nice kick dent in the middle. That's kind of easy part. And then you've got that buckle right above that crown, that sharp <laughs> crown that goes to the window seal. That is tough there. And, and you're saying you're going to knock the crowns down or push the low a little bit. Are you going to, are you going to, uh, do any cold glue or, uh, uh, Kiko tabs? Are you doing anything in that part at all to help release, really finish, release any of the, the, the crowns or the pressure? You know, it's so funny. I, I didn't do a lot of that up until uh, a few years ago. So I, I can answer both sides of that, Mike. And, and for people that are listening, I always would just go to the old school way because when I started pucking, it was an old worth thing. And we'll get into that as another thing altogether. But um, they get in, we were doing smaller dings and dents. We were doing rails. We weren't doing, you know, big, big smashes and stuff. So I kind of got away from it, even though we do a lot of hail and then started seeing some of the videos that you put up, Mike, and the different people in the community that I just look up to so much. And, uh, and, and I, like I say, even a year a tech, guy can put something up and I'm like, Oh my God, that's freaking fantastic. So, um, I do use glue now in the center where before I didn't for 20 years, I was stuck in my ways and I think it actually improves my speed by at least 30%. Now that I add glue to the body line, I'm sorry it took so long to get back to that, but I had to show, um, it was, it's amazing. Do you use glue? I use glue, but I, I try to st on big dents. I try to stay away from the the glue, the hot glue, uh, at, at least because. Oh, well, I've been I've been hot gluing everything. I don't know since two thousand six. A lot of a lot of that stuff. And if you look at my earlier videos, I completely glue pulled wrong. I mean, <laughs> please don't consider oh. those videos tutorials, please. Um, but. Uh, <laughs> today and that's what we're going to talk about we're going to talk about like if you have a big dense scenario now now here's a cool thing don is like you're telling me your one way that you do it and it works you know it works and then i'll tell you my way away and do it and it works right it's a great thing about yeah. pdr yeah. i think whoever's listening and is open-minded like don and myself and because look at you him and i you're you and i are having a conversation right here and i'm learning off of what you just said so and I am too. I'm like, yeah. that's interesting that you didn't want to add any. Can you elaborate on that, Mike? I don't really know what you mean. Why wouldn't you want to use heat in a puck on a big dent like that? Well, because out of my experience of what I've been using, because I've used those a lot. Okay, you're talking the super tab, right? Is that what you're considering? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah that's what I was. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, yeah, I, I like those and I really like the black ice. I'll get the big, the big oval, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, black ice or something. Is that what you're talking about? The yep. super tab? Super tab. Yep. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Those, well, for yep. one thing, those, those don't get me wrong. These super tabs are the shizzo. I mean, they will pull your, oh, you yeah. know what off, right? Uh, <laughs> the only thing about that is for an inex inexperienced tech or maybe a tech that's not, conscious about what they're doing they could really really make a mess make a, a a good dent turn into a really nightmare and what i mean by that is some guys don't know when to let go or like the tab doesn't know when to let go so the guys don't know when to stop pulling they're so used to like right. it, when it pops off on a normal tab or whatever yeah. they think that's when it's supposed to come off well super tabs right. or the big tabs 
you only want to pull it where the metal wants to go. You don't want to over force pulling the, the metal because then you, you, you will overstretch it. So I'm very cautious when I use that. So what I use now, Don, in, instead is cold glue. And cold glue just it automatic. I don't know how to explain it, but it knows when to let go and it will say, okay, this is how much I got out. And that's when now you can start pushing and tapping and crown, but don't try to cold glue or hot glue anymore. This of this, what I can't get out because you will overstretch the metal. It, it is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And how, how much, how much, how many dents I've actually saved without kicking myself in the butt and, and overstretching the metal yeah. and then reversing what I've done. So absolutely and, and the reversing it's usually a three-hour process that you shouldn't even have got to and you're like damn it that i leave some money on the table yeah you explain that so well mike um i've been there uh, we overdo it and it's 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 no good i am curious what kind of cold glue and i'm sure the audience is too um what what is your go-to Listen, guys, if you guys are serious about that stuff and you want to get the original one, I would go. And I think James Lee is the only one that carries it right now in the United States. And it's from Brazil. And it's the whole nine yards. You, you, I've, I've used bugle tape, whatever that is. Uh, it just it, it works similar, but it's not the same. It's not the same. I mean, I've been known to pull and this stuff won't let go. OK, so I've even pulled paint, but uh, James Lee sells the whole kit. Uh, a limit dense, a limit dent dot dot net. Is it limit? Dent? Yeah, limit dent tools. A little, OK, I, yeah, I don't think I have that. I haven't tried it, so I got to go try that now. Yeah, I've just tried that stuff that comes in the um, uh, kind of the round tube. It's got three different tabs to it and it's on the, on no. the wax oh. paper. I mean, yeah, it's not the green same. And, whatever yeah not the same no because that doesn't that yeah that, it works a little bit but not great no that, you, you you don you get that and it, it's expensive i think it's about 400 450 something like that for the whole kit okay and it and it's not and you get you get a slide hammer with it or oh yeah yeah get, yeah yeah you get this well, you do okay. yeah you get this this unique slide hammer that you've never seen before and that thing's got power. I mean, that, that thing's just ridiculous. And listen, Don, I've actually even pulled bumper dents out with it. So. <laughs> wow, great. <laughs> I great. pulled bumper dents out. I like that. Don't even have to lay on your back anymore. Huh? You can just pop them. Oh, my gosh. I, but, but Okay, so but now, now we're going to look at We're going to talk about the dent. We're going to get back into it again. And, and this is what I... I I look at the dent and I teach my students too. I say, look, when you see a dent, don't get overwhelmed with the dent. Okay. Oh, I don't know where to start. I don't know how to do that. So what I, what I, what I tell people is what I'll do is I'll say, okay, I'll take a cardboard box or piece of box, right? And I'll cover up 70% of that dent. And I'll say, okay, can you, if you had to do this part of the dent, can you fix that? It's like, yeah, I, I think I, I could fix that. And I was like, well, that's how you look at big dents. You look at what part of that dent you can fix because it's a puzzle. It's if you can get the corners, right? You get the corners on a puzzle. You go, okay, I'm going to put the corners over here and put the corners there. I know where the corners at and that, and then I'm start building my puzzle from there. It's kind of like reverse. A dent is like a reverse puzzle. So, um, so that's how I kind of look at the dent, Don, um, until any dent, because when I was doing this Mazda Miata dent, I tore that thing up, man. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And I started in all the wrong places and all this stuff. But but when it did become a mess, I go, you know what? I'm just going to start on this little part right here. And it just kept connecting and kept connecting and kept connecting. And then all of a sudden I was halfway through it and, and I wasn't going to give up. I just think that guys need to th start thinking about half the part is knowing how to start the dent nicely and then knowing how to finish it because we all know 90 percent of your time is spent on the last 10 percent of the repair absolutely i agree i always said it's a 20 you know 20 80 rule right it takes uh 20 percent of the time to get that thing looking 80 percent, and that last bit is where you earn your dough yeah for sure yeah yeah i think i agree with you about that 80 20 too i mean it's it's give and take and i think don the, the one thing is is 
um, how you start a dent is how you're going to finish. I mean, that's, that's the way it is. It's not like life is how you start. It's how it's not how you start. It's how you finish. But PDR is man. And what I mean by that is, <laughs> is cleanup, right, Don? I mean, when you, all those little mistakes oh, yeah. that you made in the beginning, you're wasting your time cleaning up all those preventative mistakes. Absolutely. But unfortunately in this business, guys, uh, you can't put the cart before the horse, can you? I mean, you just got to, <laughs> You got to pay your hard knocks and you got to learn that shit. But the thing is, is attitude, boys. Just think about, you know, where that, where that horse is going to go to at the end, you know, you're going to get your house and you're going to get all the fun toys and stuff. It'll all be worth it. But I just hate guys that are getting in the business and going to the 80% and quitting is what I don't like. Um, You're going to probably get some haters here, but um, I, I just believe in this business so much. I, I look at it as we're, you know, saving the planet every dent that we do. And, and I know that sounds corny as hell, but I, I just, I really enjoy it. And I want us to be bigger and I'm sure all you do as well, but bigger than the body shops, you know, just be, or let us be the first stop before the body shop, yeah. because this, that's how we should be looked at. And we should all be living like Kings and not having to chase hail around the country and, being home with our families at night and, and not cutting our, you know, feet out from one guy that says he's going to do it for a hundred dollars when you know damn well it's worth a thousand, you know, it's, it, it's just not, we, we just need some kind of unite, united here. And I didn't mean to get on a soapbox, but it, it just means so much to me that I just want the best for the business and the 80, 20 thing to come full circle. Um, that at last 20% guys, that's where you're going to get better. That's where, that's what really separates the men from the boys, you know, and, and I've got a lot of route tech friends of mine that um, always go to 80%. And it's not because they're not capable. It's because they can't make the money when it's a hundred or $200 a car. And so they say, I'm an 80% tech. And it's hard to hear them say that because that's, that's, that sucks, you know, for them because they're way better than that. So I couldn't agree more. That. I couldn't agree more, Don. It's it. Look, it, It takes discipline to say you're committed to a repair because you get close and you know the customer is going to be happy, right? But it all goes back to that one podcast I mentioned. It doesn't give, we don't care about the the customer. We know, okay, that's that's easy. That's easy to, to, to impress the customer. But... Again, sure. what would you ask yourself this after you get done with your repair? Would you go, would, would you be willing to have a few good PDR techs look at your work after you're done? You know, what, what now, that now do you think, now do you think your work's perfect. great? <laughs> right, 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 right. You just, you start, you go into a cold sweat. If you're walking over to look at something that I would knew I was 80% on, I'd be like, ah, shit, he's going to think I'm a hack, <laughs> you know? Exactly. I guarantee if you were doing a dent for another guy that was in the industry, you would probably do it 200% better automatically. No, oh, no, yes. no questions asked, you know? Yeah, but yeah I, exactly. But you, you can't and teach, think, you can't teach you know, that though. I mean, you, uh, Don, you can't teach that. I mean, like it's, that's honestly in a way that's good for us, good techs. And then there's the guys who, who are settling and, and, you know, it's just a shame, but I mean, I hope they are, they're aware. I, I think it, it starts with themselves and they can hear that what we're talking about and, and I know a lot of them are going, yeah, that's me. Yeah, I need to, I need to get my shit together. Right. So, you know. Sure. And to all you guys that are thinking that, you can. You can change your life tomorrow. Might take you a year to get there, but start pushing yourself on every dent. So what? You lose the freaking hundred, two hundred dollars a week because you didn't you know, spend a little more time on each dent. You're going to be freaking rock star in a year, man. You're going to be there and uh, doing retail and uh, making us all proud. So go for it, guys. Well, it's, it's an investment, Don, in yourself, right? I mean, like, look, you know, mm-hmm. you, you're not, you're not going to, you know, you're not going to get a million bucks by, you know, putting $10, uh, you know, uh, overnight, but you keep putting that, that, that 10% more effort here and another 10% more effort there and more. And next thing you know, you're stacking your effort and it's getting better. And then you're getting more return because it, it's, it's costing you less effort, just if that makes sense, because your effort is getting easier to do as your experience gets better. So I think you need to, no. you guys need to invest in yourselves 
believe in yourselves, think about how you can be a really good tech and care about your work, especially if you want to take yourself to another level. And that's why we're here talking about big dents because, you know, they can be intimidating, but if you look at it in a different perspective, I think you'll have a much better shot at it. I do too. And I, I was excited when you, uh, you know, we talk all the time, Mike, but I, I, I was really excited when you wanted me to talk about big dents with you because I really believe in exactly what we're talking about for all the new techs and older techs and whatever, on whatever level you at. I think that's how we're going to get on the map right now. We're being overlooked. It's the strangest thing, but if we can do more big dents and people go, wow, you know, I knew they could take out hail damage. I knew they could take out little door dings, but you're doing big smashes now. I yeah. think that's really going to put us on the map. Um, and get people thinking before, you know, the body shot. Maybe I should go check out one of these guys that can, you know, big do big smashes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and that's the thing is that, um, I think the more majority of techs can, can do bigger dents, the more that you say, like you said, we will be the more forefront of the body shots because, um, I think it's just straight edge uh, on education. It's just people just don't know. And the insurance, even the insurance, they, you know, there because the insurance companies are tied in as a DRP, and so hey, you go find a PDR tech. It's you know what happened to the PDR tech shops. You know, so are you dealing with insurance companies as well on these big smashes? I am, I am, and I, we just had a really big smash. I'll do a post on uh, Instagram tomorrow if you guys want to check it out. It's Dent underscore Craft, but um, it it's incredible. He got hit with this uh, a big flock of geese flew up and just smashed this this hood and stuff. So. We had the, um, it was kind of weird, and this is important. I'm glad you brought this up. The insurance guy, you know, we had $2,000 on this repair. And uh, the, the guy comes in and he goes, well, uh, I can get a hood for $600. It's just a new Equinox. I know it's uh, aluminum, but uh, I get I can get a freaking hood for under 600 bucks, and I can paint it and blend the fenders. I know it's pearl white, but I'll be at X, you know, amount of money. Yeah. And um, he was within like $200. So I said, uh, I said, well, we're going to maybe probably PDR. He goes, I don't care what you do. So we actually called the customer and we converted it back. And that's, that's what happened. So we, uh, we, we won on that deal. I don't know if anybody follows us, but I was uh, having a problem a week ago and a car's been at the shop uh, for hail damage, Mike, and it's a state farm deal. And I wrote it up for 5,900 and they came out and they said 30, uh, was it 3,398? And I said, uh, we're not even on the same ballpark here. And I held out and the customer has been a customer for a long time. So he didn't care. And it was a, a, like a third or fourth vehicle for him. They just came back today and we got all the money. Um, it's, it's who's going to hold out the longest, you know, and this insurance game guys, one thing you should throw back if you're, if you're any hail chasers out there and it really worked for me just this morning, by the way, I just closed this deal with this state farm. You know, it says one to five for 75, Mike on the fender yes and they tried to do that to me yes mm -hmm. yeah and so what i had here was i had 40 dents on that panel and the guy writes it up for 200 bucks and i said are you kidding me one to five is as we've always said 75 right yeah. so i said let's do it this way i'm at 460 you're at 200 i said Take that one to five, that's $75, and I have 40 dents, so it's eight times, you know, uh, the one to five. For me, that's 75, so now we're in the same ballpark. This is ridiculous when you get up to one to five, and then you go six to 15, that's nine more dents, not four more dents at one to five. Yeah. And then, and, and I just think it's so wrong. But anyway, he started looking at me when I said one to five is 75. I said, you got 40 dents there, eight times you know, that many times, you know, give it to me five times. And he's like, ah, I can't do that, you know? And I said, well, I know you can't, but I said, that's exactly how this should go down. And he looked at me for the longest time and he was perplexed. And he actually said, you know, you're right. And it was great because he, we started finding other things on the vehicle. We didn't get everything we wanted, but we, we did better, you know? Well, you helped him justify, make it make sense of why you, why you deserved it. You know, this is the same thing. This guy, I told the guy, like, he's like, I'm going to give you 125 for the door. I'm like, no, you're not. <laughs> I mean, 
No, you're not. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, like, that's all that is glue pole. This is a Subaru here. And if I break the paint, then you might as well just write it up for conventional then. Cause I'm not doing it for a hundred bucks. So anyways, no. he, he, no. he gave it to me and I had to justify it to him. Um, sure. Let's get back into the big dent part. Like as far as this, yeah, way. Yeah, now, now, because this, no, we're still going to talk about this, but see a lot of our repairs now are getting way beyond two three hundred dollars you know for the longest time don and i'm guilty of it as well was doing these train wrecks for less than five hundred dollars i mean I, we, it finds us it finds our way in i i'm with you i'm with you it sucks and so now i've been i've been actually and when i know the job is going to be seven hundred thousand twelve hundred dollars I let the customer know either through if I'm talking to them on the phone or if I'm doing an email or a text message, I let them know. Yeah. I understand this might be more than your deductible, but we can still save your factory finish and deal with your insurance company if that is the route that you would like to go. And yeah. I would say, I ne- if I didn't say that, I never hear back from the customer. They just think, oh man, that's expensive. But technically, I- when you give them that option, they are, they are, they're like, okay, well, that sounds great because you're still going to do a PDR and you're going to take care of my insurance, things like that. Now, you you could do other little things to, to entice them to come with you just like you would do in Hale. But I feel like that's something yeah. that's something that more businesses need to practice uh, when they do are these big smashes. I, I think so too. And I, and, and, and kudos to Paul as well on this deal. Um, you know, Gordon, uh, he, um, he's changed it for me. I don't know if if you guys aren't out there doing big smashes where you think, you know, where the money's at um, and you don't have mobile tech RX, you need to do it because what it does is immediately closes about 60% more deals than I was a year ago at this time. It's amazing. You pull the car in, you look at it, you measure it out and you let them look over your shoulder the whole time. You say, sir, I've got a 11 inch. Would you agree? You make a mark with a little wax pen, whatever you're using. Yep, we got 11, you know, oh, we got to put in these factors, blah, blah, blah. And it comes to 1300 bucks a year ago, and then it closes, which is amazing. You're like, oh, my God, I'm going to have taken $700 a year ago on this yeah. damn thing. And But you print it out to him, and he goes, oh. And so what I like to say with that mobile tech RX, Mike, and I'd want your info, especially on these big smashes, as I say, well, let's let's bring it in and measure it up and punch in the you know punch in everything and we'll see what it comes to. I I couldn't even guess, but it's that's pretty good that you've got there, you know. And then I'm not coming up with a with some kind of a weird fictitious number, you know. It's it's legitimate, and they always say, well, most of the time they say, let's go on the schedule, let's do it. I get it, blah 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 blah, and it's amazing because um, up until and I was probably at 25 year career at this point. I would walk outside and the guy it wasn't my fault, but he had a Rolex on. He had a nice Mercedes and I'd look at a dent in about three seconds and I would say, that's $300 dent. And they'd say, oh, I'll get back to you. And you wouldn't close the deal. Yeah. But you bring it in, that same guy, you bring it in, you measure it out. It's not three inches because that's what you were seeing outside. It's actually bigger than you even thought yourself. And it's four inches and it does go a little bit further than you thought. You didn't see the buckle all sacks. It was in direct sun. And all of a sudden it turns into a six, $700 dent that you would have said $300 to the same guy. And he would have walked and that guy's going on the schedule. I agree. I, I think it's, it's definitely a different way to handle your business. I mean, if you're not willing to find a system that works for you as far as the price guide, regardless if it's uh, the Mobile Tech RX with Paul Corden's price guide, there's another one in there or you can make your own up. I mean, gosh, dang, you're missing the boat, man. Like, totally missing the boat. Yeah, it it just works, guys. It really does. And for $60 a month, 65, whatever it is, you will pay for that the first, very first dent that you use it for on the first Monday that you go to work. That's how important it is. And it's so great. And you know what I love about this, you guys? Um, I was never the best bookkeeper person. I mean, I always got it done, but I always felt this that's extra level of stress, Mike. I don't know about you, but it was like, I got to get those in there. I got to get those in there. You know, Kim's helping. Everybody's helping. But it's like I got open-endedness. And with this, Mobile Tech RX guys that don't know and don't have it, we should be getting paid for this, Mike. But um, they, they it will expedite into your QuickBooks. And you will open up your QuickBooks and you go, oh, my God, all my invoices are in there. You open it up and you close them up. And 
it is so simple and so streamlined. I was taking, I was old barbaric times. I had, I was handwriting my damn invoices Mm -hmm. and then I'd have to put them in one at a time, one at a time. And it was taking up so much time. Now, when I write that customer up, not only do I have their email, not only do I have it, the, 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 it on file for the guy that I looked at three months ago and told him 500 bucks and he comes in and says, yeah, I want to get on the schedule. I told you, you told me 200 bucks. You're like, Oh really? Let's take a look. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. It looks like it was $500 and yeah, we can get you on the schedule. You know, how many times have you guys done a job when someone's told you it's $200 that you quoted them when you know, you must've at least said 500, but you're not going to say anything, but smile and say, okay, yes, sir. Let's do that for you. Yeah. There's no more of that. No. There just isn't, you know. So. No, it's it's definitely a powerful way to do that, and that's why I I'm we're bringing this up. There's so many we're, we're talking big break, big dent breakdown. It's not just the dent doing the dent. It's all about part of selling the dent. Obviously, exactly. breaking down, looking at the dent a different way, getting paid more money for it. Listen, guys, it would 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 you if you were in the army and you were in, you're a drill sergeant and would you send your your soldiers into battle without any ammunition? Then you know why would you why would you walk into a battle with a customer who who wants to give you his business? But you, first, you have to justify why you should you should uh, he should use you. You know what I mean? If you're just going to pull numbers out of the way, you're putting doubt in what he's what what you're saying. And he's going to, he's just going to go look, like you said, I'll get back to you. Uh, I'll let you know, yada, yada. So, um, I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's essential. So let's recap a little bit, Don. So we, we're, we're talking about a dent. Now we're not talking about just any kick in dent. We're just talking dents in general, but I was just kind of helping people envision, envisioning, envisioning, uh, the dents and, (laughs) And if it was me, if it, if it was, if it was the way I was going to do it, I would have, I would have cold glue the, the dent uh, first, because I would, I'd probably start more towards the bottom and work towards the, towards the top, because I want the metal flow going back towards the, the crown. So again, I love, I love this too. A different, completely different, yeah. but I love it. I, yeah, this yeah. is, and I'm not pushing, I, I'm cold gluing, okay? So I'm, sure, the metal, sure. the cold glue says, hey, I'm going to pull the metal naturally. And that's what it does. It naturally says, okay, and, and, and wherever it goes, that's where the limit's at. It's it's not telling, it's not saying, I'm going to force you to go this way, and then you create more work. But I'm going to use cold glue as much as I can to get that out to get it started shall i say yeah. okay then i would probably I'm gonna have to order that <laughs> it's like i'm gonna have to order it. and then <laughs> what, what i would do is i would do similar to what you just said earlier is that you would start the crown but don don't you and this is i'm not putting it on the spot but don't you kind of have nope. to you have to kind of like determine is this a crown dent meaning do i start the crown first or is this a dent dent where i push before I start hitting the crown. So is it every time the same for you? Yeah, no, you're, you're, you're right. So if I'm seeing a U versus a V, (laughs) if it's a U, I'm probably pounding it down. Mm -hmm. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm going up top and I'm trying to ride that wave, but I don't mean that. I don't mean that by guys are listening to me by pounding behind. That's only in a buckle. You know, if I'm doing like a rail or I'm pulling glue, I'm going right on top. You know, I want to just get it the most smoothest as quick as possible. So it's a completely different hammering thing versus a buckle versus, you know, pulling, pulling something sharp, obviously guys. So, or a door dam, you know, you're making a deliberate poke, you're hitting right on it. You're not going behind it. So what I'm saying is just get behind it and I'm riding the wave down in. But again, like to, 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 I know it's so hard for guys to visualize this, but if it's a V and I can really see a lot of shadow on both sides, Chance, chances are I'm going to do what you're doing, Mike, and really relieve a lot of pressure down lower. And I love this idea. Is this called Glexo glue or? Uh, she's ca- Cola Fria, technically. That's the Cola Fria. Cola Fria. Yeah. Okay, Cola Fria. Okay. I need mm-hmm. to order some of that, like, stack. Uh, you Don, really like you, that idea. you are going to love it. I mean, it, it pulls surprisingly well. 
Um, and just, just the, the reaction of it. When I first got it and Daniel got it, I was laughing my butt off. I thought, I go, well, you just got ripped off, dude. I, cause unfortunately <laughs> we saw that we saw the guys demoing it at mobile tech, uh, expo. And we just, we just said, man, that this, that's not going to work, dude. You know, but lo and behold, Daniel Grom buys it. And he's like, I got it. And I was like, you are, you know what? You, you got a problem, man. You, 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 you buy stuff that's now it doesn't even work, you know? And, and so he's like, well, I want to try it. And I was like, you know what? Let's, let's just do a video. And you, you can see the first time that we used it and I dented our own rental car. It's on YouTube. Just, just check it out. It's, it's, I terrible. saw it. I saw Did it, you? man. It's great. It's, it's great. a funny but video, I, but I wasn't believe, you know, yeah, yeah. It's great. You guys are too funny together. I think I saw it anyway. One of you guys kicked it, didn't you? Yeah, we we punched it. We punched yeah. it. Yeah. 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 Oh, you. Oh yeah. no, no. I saw that with different one where you kicked it. I think. No, this I'm I'm talking about. But go go on, go on. Uh, no, I'm just saying it. it I I think I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so gone. just the Glexo glue and how good it is, and Daniel getting it for the first time and bringing it to you, and you thought it was a joke, but yeah, it really I, holds, obviously. It does, guy. It got, I, I, everyone I've referred to who who purchased it and just said that, man, I just, I, it's the best thing that that helps them start a dent and keep it clean, and that's the main thing is you know pushing it with a soft tip was back in the day, or or hot gluing it was back in the day after back in the day. But now it's cold glue and it's uh, it and it works. It works really, really well, and you'd be surprised on how much of that of that dent you you can get started, and and it saves you tons of time and prevents all the push marks and taps and all that other stuff that you would get if you didn't have it. So it looks really good. Um, Can't wait to add it tomorrow. So, yep. So I I uh, I th I think. So that that would be my way, and then and then what would you what do you use? What's your go to tool, Don, on big dents? I mean, what do you find yourself using the most in a door? So you know, I I really got turned on, and it's uh, your fault. I will tell you, um, with all these ultra tools, I'm absolutely loving. I was so stuck in my ways with the J type uh, uh, fixed handle tool for so long. And I have some really great tools that I still go to kind of like that hammer, but um, in all honest, I, I just think those are so great to actually go in the reverse way. I can use more of a smarter uh, straight iron push um, versus, you know, coming over the top and going towards my body and, you know, just jacking my forearm up like by 10 o'clock, you know, and you can just work smarter, you know, so I love those, but I got to give a big shout out to um, my buddy, John Verdeen, and he, he has kind of changed it a little bit uh, there with the Dent Reaper. He's a friend of mine and, and obviously a local Minnesota guy, and he gave me one of the first ones, and I was one of the ones that R&D it for him, and, and I was proud to be that guy, and it's just an amazing tool. I think I told you about it, and then you got it when you were down there at NME with a couple guys, and you love that tool too, right? absolutely and you know what i did to it though so why i do i do know what you did i just think it's, it's, a, it's it just took a, 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 a just another notch up there too it's like it's like putting it you know what's like what's that guy uh who used to be that cook and used to throw the spice on and go bam right <laughs> that, <laughs> yeah that's yeah. exactly that's what it was yeah. like man you know absolutely so do you like the exact way it came or did you give it a little kick on it or no uh, do you mean like the, the, the way the, the, the bend is, or are you talking about the handle or what Yeah, you, what the bend mean? is about just when it starts going up the J there, I actually bent mine about another half inch and it kind of changed it for the deeper doors for me. Um, a couple of those car doors I wasn't able to do, but now I'm able to do it all. But I've got one of them that, that John gave me that uh, has the adjustable handle from a one. So it's a little bit shorter handle and I love it as well but I can actually move it around. And I kept that one the same and it's still just as awesome of a tool. But uh, there's interesting. Totally is he coming out tools with more tools? Now. Is he coming out with more tools? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know that he is. I don't know that he is. I haven't heard anything, but he's going to be at MME with us, but like I'm, he signed up. Yes. I, I I'm excited for him. So I, yes, uh, he's going to love too. it. Me too. So we're going to kill it over there. He, he, um, he will. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Well, Don, this is uh, it was really good. So, I mean, I, I just wanted to bring you back on. I, we were, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but Bryce Kelly was supposed to join us, but we will get him on the next podcast. I don't know if it'll be next week or the week after, but um, 
Sure. We'll get him on. And I would love be a different subject. Yeah, I would love to do that, Mike. And I and and, and I think of like a hundred things that we could talk about with Big Dense right now, and and the, you know the different soft tools that we didn't get into, and we it's a whole other thing. And it would be great to uh, yeah. do it again. Yeah, we would like to talk. We're going to talk about finishing. That's what we'd like to talk about. Let's 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 talk about that. Okay, on the next one, how what nice. do you think with Bryce? Nice. Yeah, because um, yeah, that he's got some incredible sounds, fish, sounds. finishing skills, and so do you. I mean, you guys, if you haven't checked out Don, check him out on uh, Instagram. What's your handle there? I don't want to mess it up. It's uh, dent dent underscore craft. Thank you, Mike. I'm, uh, I'm I'm just enjoying all you guys out there, honestly, and and uh, it's so nice to uh, be on here with you, Mike. It's it's my honor to talk to all the guys out there that are doing this thing because it's it's a unique business right you yep. know it's not yep. like it's an everyday thing and 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 it will take you as far as you want it to guys so i am uh, excited that we're all dent brothers i love when i can actually talk to someone that knows what the hell i'm talking about too so <laughs> that uh mme is so much fun and and uh, peter college and and just you know mme and or, or, or mte is just a fun thing as well so Everybody out there, just keep pushing and, and take care of business. So That's right. And I want to end it with a, just a little uh, tech tip here is, um, I don't know if you guys have been checking, uh, you, if you look at my Facebook uh, page, you will see that things that populate automatically there. Uh, if you want to save some time and you ha you do YouTube videos or you, 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 know, you've, you just do a lot of social media, which you should be doing. Uh, you need to look into an app called Zapier. It's just, it's friggin' awesome. And Zapier is, uh, it will auto-populate whatever you do. You could, you, you could, if you make a post on WordPress, it could go to your Facebook page, or if you do a YouTube uh, video, it'll post to your, your Facebook page or wherever your Twitter page, uh, your WordPress site, whatever you, wherever you want to direct it to. And that's called Zapier, Z-A-P-I-E-R. It is a fantastic, fantastic uh, app to use or plugin. It's a plugin, sorry. It is something you have to do from the computer. Um, but it will save you a lot of time if you are a social media person and you want to be able to, to uh, give yourself more time instead of posting different things everywhere separately. So check that out, Zapier. Um, we will be having that, Don, at Mega Media Event. So it is... Uh, it will show you how to set it up and, and uh, do that stuff. So it's going to be awesome. Oh, that, that I have not heard about that one. So Yeah, so That's check that out. I use, that. I use that. So if you go on my Facebook page, I, I did a YouTube video this morning, and it automatically oh, po oh. populated to the Facebook page of uh, uh, gotcha. time. So it was awesome. All right, nice, guys, we, nice, are, nice. we are out of here. Don, thank you very much. Hey, maybe you can come back on next week if Bryce comes on. If not, we'll, we'll bring you both on at the same time. I would, I would love it. I hope it's a great time. And thanks to all you guys. Listen. Awesome, awesome, Don. So I'll see you online, and I'll see you guys on the next podcast. Thanks for listening.